What's up guys, Ronnie or Death Donkey back with another video. Sorry it's been a while since my last upload. We kind of bought a house, so I've been moving in and getting settled. I'm super stoked to be back at the video thing though, and today's video is on Ender 3 V2 upgrades and why I recommend them. I heard a much higher up YouTuber say, not to chase quality you won't get 3D printing. So I made it a challenge to get the most quality from one of the cheapest machines on the market. Stay tuned to find out how I did it. Going back to February of this year, I went to a friend who's been printing for a few years now and said, I'm thinking about getting a 3D printer. And his response wasn't words. It was three links, then a few words. I'd recommend one of these printers. And that was it. The links were three different printers, all within a reasonable price bracket and all with similar build volumes. What happens next may startle you. I chose the Ender 3 V2 from Creality, which I got off of Amazon, and it arrived in two days. With the printer, I purchased the all-metal extruder mechanism upgrade, more on that in just a sec, as well as the upgraded bed springs and PTFE2. I got all of those upgrades in a single set for right around 20 or 30 US dollars. These upgrades were installed on the machine during the initial setup. My first test prints, if you will, included these upgrades and I didn't print with the stock counterparts at all. Smash cut to now and that extruder upgrade from the get probably saved me a cracked extruder lever and extrusion issues. Coming from how many people post about this on the Ender 3 V2 subreddit, I'd say it's somewhat common for this printer to suffer this failure, if you will. Overall, well worth the 20 or 30 bucks, in my opinion, for the upgrades. To start this Ender Bender transformation, if you will, I got rid of the stock Creality glass for a magnetic spring steel PEI sheet and got a BL Touch version 3.1 at the same time. The stock Creality glass with the lightly textured coating was hit and miss with adhesion for me. I'm against using additives for adhesion and the very friend that linked me the printers obviously had a lot more to say once I sent him the order confirmation and was of significant help in the early stages of printing, recommended the PEI build surface. I went with the magnetic spring steel variant, the exact one on screen, to get rid of the clips that once held the glass on and allow 100% use of the bed without worrying that the nozzle had anything to collide into. But once the BL Touch was installed, I was basically out of his realm of advice and guidance aside from the occasional print quality issue at this point. He's the type that doesn't fuck with it if it's not broken, and his machine prints with some custom upgrades he made himself, but no crazy firmware. In fact, it's stock and no probes or sensors. At this point is also only like two months from the original purchase of the machine, from the end of February to the beginning of April. I went from no knowledge to cramming as much of my buddy's three plus years of knowledge with a master's in additive manufacturing and design, I might add, down my throat in two months like the bodybuilders on SpongeBob who eat nails in the morning without milk for gains. In this time frame, whenever we spoke, it was about printing and printers. I'd say it was agonizing, but looking back, I actually enjoyed every troubleshooting second of it. Not that I spent a lot of time fixing or troubleshooting things, actually. The machine at this point was mainly printing for days at a time with back-to-back -back prints, typically. With the BL Touch came new firmware as well, and it was at this time I ditched the stock offerings from Creality and went with a firmware the community on Reddit was talking about, known as the Gyres firmware. This made changes to the UI and opened up the functionality of the machine a bit more. I'd highly recommend it if nothing else, and it's free, unlike everything else in this video. 
I swear by it and recommend it to anyone who doesn't have it on Reddit and has this machine. The BL Touch isn't as necessary as a good build surface like the PEI, but I wanted to ensure any imperfections in the bed could be compensated for and the BL Touch out of all the options seemed to be the best choice. It's extremely accurate and my kit came with the brackets to mount to stock holes on the machine. You would be extremely naive to think a between two and $300 printer has a perfectly flat bed. The BL Touch corrects for these slight imperfections, ensuring the most sexy of first layers. Smash cut to about four to five months into printing with my Ender, and I noticed during a print, one of my belt tensioners has started to squeak, and that's just unacceptable. I replaced them with metal ones that had good reviews off Amazon for both the bed and extruder gantry. These actually roll with less resistance than the stock plastic ones and thus probably also means the steppers have to work slightly less, which is good. And no more squeak, which is also good. I then realized that anything beyond a PLA type plastic is approaching temps that people say can be dangerous with PTFE tubes. Now, I want to be able to print anything comfortably and to achieve this, I knew I had to get an all metal hot end. But when you start getting into flexibles, that's when things can get tight. And I mean that literally. It's one thing to have an all metal hot end to print at higher temps, but flexibles kind of need tight filament paths. It needs to be confined with not a lot of areas for the filament to get out from. I did a bit of research into which hot end would best suit a large amount of filaments and keep the PTFE tube from ever coming in contact with heat. During this research period, I ordered the dual Z-screw upgrade kit. I would encounter small amounts of gantry sag, though it was correctable once caught. I felt the only true remedy to this would be to support the other side with another motor and Z-axis screw. The kit I got came with everything I needed and hooked right up with only a small bump in the V-Ref voltage needed due to the way the kit has the stepper motors hooked up in parallel. Shortly after that upgrade was installed, the research into which hot end would best suit me was over. E3D had a Hemera they called it that caught my eye. It checked all the boxes I needed it to to print essentially any type of filament I could buy, but it had a catch. This is where it gets real complicated, but let me at least try to explain. Unlike a few other hot ends I came across online in my research, the Hemera didn't just mount up to stock hardware. It required some custom mount solutions, which I was able to find online, and in fact, the documentation on E3D's site points you to some for this printer even. However, I'm weird. And though these mounts I was finding online would have more than likely worked, I wasn't happy with them in certain areas. Not that these designers are bad, that's not at all what I'm saying, I'm just peculiar when it comes to certain things. Many of the community design mounts I was finding wasn't taking full use of the gantry plate itself or all four T-slot holes on the Hemera itself to mount it. Many only used two to three screws to fix the printed plate to the machine and another two to three to fix the Hemera to it. I wanted more than two to three screws holding each on. To add, these mounts I was finding from others seemed to include and require the use of quite a lot of support material. And my final complaint, if you will, on others' designs was many mounted the BL Touch to plastic and I didn't like that idea. It probably would have been fine, however, I was building this machine to be as good as it can be and plastic can flex. I was not about to have even a hundredth of a millimeter in precision sacrificed, so I designed my own mounts and fan shrouds to not only be print friendly in that no support is needed on any of them, but to also take full advantage of any and all possible screw holes to fix it to the machine securely. I was even able to retain the metal bracket that secures the BL Touch, though I did have to move it to the other side. Not a huge deal as I retained its alloy rigidity. The hardware I used for this project will be linked in the description. It's an assortment of M3 hardware from Amazon. 
If you go to replace this, ensure you're using the properly sized hardware. If the wrong length is chosen, it will ruin your Hemera. I also got all of the high temp fixings and conversion parts for the Hemeras I use, but this substantially increased the price for this setup and is not at all necessary. I can go all the way up to 500 degrees Celsius safely on the hot end with things like the titanium heat break, copper heater block, and high temp capable heater cartridge and temp sensor from E3D. I also went with their Nozzle X Nozzle in 0.4 millimeters again to be able to print any filament I can think of, abrasive or high temperature. Some of you may have noticed the clear V-slot roller wheels. These were purchased at some point throughout this whole endeavor, but the purpose of these was to add 10 millimeters per second to the print speed. Just kidding, they only add swag, and what's a printer without swag? These wheels were not at all necessary. The other thing to mention here would be the blower fans I chose. They are Winson brand 5015 blower fans shown here, hooked up again in parallel like the stepper motors for the Z-axis. And all of this stuff came from Amazon and I think it all had prime shipping as well. At the very end of everything, I decided to upgrade the main board to the Creality version 4.2.7 board. I did this only because I was able to get a second Ender 3 V2 from a friend that lost interest in printing, unfortunately, but that printer had some quality control issues from Creality in that the drivers on my second machine were in fact non-silent drivers. If these machines were ever going to print identically, they would need identical boards like they should have had from the factory, but I digress. It wasn't as hard of a swap as one might think. This video isn't really a how-to and is more of a here's what I changed and upgraded and why because I was actually really, really impressed with the quality this machine can now produce. Things like calibrating E-steps and ensuring a proper manual level on the bed are always important and simply slapping on the upgrades I go through were not the end of the process. Firmware tweaks and small sacrifices still had to be made. For example, and probably the biggest negative is that I actually lost a small portion of the stock build volume converting this machine to a Hemera. Now in the design, I had the option to offset the Hemera and not lose build volume. And I tried that, but that put uneven strain on the gantry wheels and I didn't like that. So I centered it up and took about a 10-ish millimeter hit to the right side and back side of the bed. Not a huge deal for me as I have a CR10 as well. And you guessed it, it too has a Hemera. I think that finishes up the upgrades I put on the Ender 3 V2 and hope that some, if not all of it, helps you squeeze that last bit of quality that is achievable in these machines with just some love put into them. In the description, I'll be sure to add the Amazon links of the parts I used with the exception of the E3D components being purchased directly from E3D. These are not affiliate links and in no way benefit me. These are only parts and hardware I chose, whether it be for their quality or use case. Also in the description is a link to my Discord server, Chat Nation. We are a bunch of gamers, nerds and geeks with a slowly growing printing and gaming community who just like to game, print, chat, laugh and share together from all corners of the globe. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button. But if you did enjoy this video, please hit the thumbs up and tell me what was your favorite upgrade in the comments section, whether you purchased it or printed it. This was Death, and as always, thanks for watching, and until next time.